Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. Something a bit different today, I want to speak about how you interact with your watches in terms of setting the time and uh, winding them. And all the watches uh, are a bit different and so the interaction that you have with it uh, will be more or less pleasant depending on the movement. And sometimes the cheaper watches are the easiest to set the time on while very expensive watches will show some backlash and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, in, a, in a second. Let's start with the easiest. Uh, the basic 7S26, 7S36 movements from uh, Seiko, which you find, for example, in this uh, Seiko 5 model. You can't wind them by hand. So to get them going, you gotta shake them. But just a little shake while it like, gets it going. Uh, if you're gonna be f sitting still all, all day, uh, you never quite know how much reserve you have. It probably won't be a lot. So you're going to have to shake it quite a bit. So that's the first issue you're going to have with these watches. But if it's your daily watch and you wear it all the time, usually it'd be okay because you have uh, probably a good 35, 40 hours of power reserve on those watches. What I like about any, any Seiko is that setting the time is usually very fast and the motion is upwards going rather than downwards on the ETA or Celita movements, for example. What I mean by that is you go up, which is very easy, while going down is a harder motion. And it goes very, very fast. You go around the dial really fast. So if you quickly want to see if you're in the morning, on the afternoon, etc., it's very easy to, to do on uh, any, any Seiko, really. Uh, that goes uh, it's the same for the, the other movements. So the next refinement of the Seiko movements, it's with the uh, 4R family. I believe here we have the uh, 4R35, yes. Here on a Seiko diver, screwed down crown this time. So it's the first thing to take notice. While you have protection for water resistance, it's a bit of uh, gymnastic, but it's fairly quick. Fairly quick. The winding here on uh, any Seiko usually is very smooth. You hear a little, a slight ratcheting, but mm, a pleasant one. Uh, it, it's, it, it's still very soft. And again, to set the time on the 4R family of movement is very, very quick. You can, the, the gearing is, uh, is very fast. And that's something that uh, you can appreciate if you have many watches like I do and uh, need to set the time uh, quite often uh, on them. Now, one thing uh, I'm gonna also mention while I'm uh, doing this is the problem of the backlash. Now, Seiko might be a brand offering very affordable watches, or you might say cheap watches, but look, when I pull the crown, the minute's hand doesn't move at all. And when I let it go, it doesn't move at all. And as, it's, as I let it go, it starts moving straight away. If you're used to cheap watches, you know, uh, affordable watches like, like Seiko, you might think, so yeah, what's the, what's the big deal with it? Well, the big deal with it is that uh, some very expensive watches actually show some backlash. And so when you pull the crown, the minute hands move, which is okay. But problem is when you push it back in, it doesn't start moving right away. And let me show you uh, jumping here to an Omega. So this is a Calibre 3330, which is not really famous, uh, but it's based on a, on a Valjoux 7750. So it's, uh, you can manually wind it. And by the way, I'll mention here that uh, I've kind of broken it using uh, this tool because winding, um, a speedmaster is sometimes difficult, sometimes difficult. And now it's it's kind of stuck. Actually, now it's working. It's working a little bit. Uh, it, it got it got really stuck uh, recently because I was winding too fast with this uh, little tool uh, made in China and uh, pretty greasy. It worked well for a while, but one day I just uh, wound it too fast, and. Um, the, the watch, the whole watch started, started wobbling. If you know what it is, uh, let me know because I'm going to have to bring it uh, for, for repair anyway. Uh, see, now it's kind of stuck. And if I, if I force it, the whole watch will, will wobble. 
but the watch still works. I can uh, wind it by just uh, shaking it and I can still set the time. And for the purpose of this video, I wanted to do it on this watch because when you set the time on a Valjoux 7750, let's set it, for example, precisely here, when you re-engage it, what's going to happen is that the, the minute hand is not going to move for a while. It will start move af moving after maybe 15, 30 seconds, so it will not realign with the next minute marker uh, after a minute has passed. So the trick here, uh, I'm not going to do it really precisely here, but uh, trust, uh, trust my word for it, is when you pull the crown and stop it, let's say it's 5 after the hour. So you want to set it here. Instead of going here, you have to go 10 minutes beyond. So 15, exactly 10 minutes beyond. And then you bring it back to the 5. Then when you re-engage, there won't be any backlash and the minute hand will start going. So that's a three, four thousand dollar watch and a movement that's used in countless uh, of uh, high-end watches and it shows this uh, annoying uh, backlash which you don't have with a $300 watch from Japan. Uh, so take it uh, as you will. Let's go back to our Seiko's with the 6R15. It's the most uh, slightly more refined movement that Seiko uh, makes. And it has the same uh, nice feature. So here it's a dress watch. So as opposed to a dive watch, you don't have to unscrew the crown. So it's very easy when you pick it up to wind it. This and I put it next to the microphone so you can hear the winding of a Seiko. It's a very, very tiny click. There's no resistance, very easy, very smooth. This watch is very accurate with a 6R15. It's accurate to the second. And, you know, I don't know how it's adjusted. Maybe computers adjust it in uh, factories. They make millions of those watches. And again, here, uh, everything, nothing moves. The minute hand doesn't move at all when you pull the crown or when you push it back in, you know. And it starts moving straight away. There's no backlash. And uh, changing the time is very, very fast. So everything is very easy. What's a step down when you have a Seiko movement is that the, I'll show you the, the date, will not really click on at midnight precisely. It will start engaging fairly early in the evening. You see already at 10 o'clock here. So if you're up in the late in the evening, it's never pretty sight to see that the date changing. So not 11.30. And at midnight, yeah, it sort of clicks before midnight, even if you're doing it like this. Uh, as it's working, usually it will click uh, at the midnight point. And uh, as a reminder, never leave it uh, there if you're going to change the date behind it. Uh, so don't change your date at night. Bring it uh, uh, far uh, beyond the 9 p.m., uh, 3, p uh, 3 a.m. Uh, place, because when the date engages, you don't want to force it into uh, a new date. Uh, using this uh, date uh, mechanism. Um, speaking of which, so on the first position, you can uh, quick set the date. With Seiko, it, go, it goes down, which I find also very uh, instinctive. Just like I find setting the time uh, going up is very instinctive. Um, and you don't have that with the ETA-based movement, the, the Celita movements. Uh, just to finish with the, with the Seiko, as I didn't mention, uh, the SKX, same as our very first watch, you have to shake it to get it going. So it's another watch that you want to wear a lot. You see here it's between uh, days and date. Uh, this one so has the day date, so you have to learn as well how to, to set those. Why not do it in this video? Uh, it's always a, a fun thing. Uh, so first, as I said, you unscrew the crown, then you pull it to the second second click. You set put the time away from the danger zone. Here, for example, push it back in, put it back to the first click. And when you go down, it will change the date. You have the alternate date here in Arab, Arabic. And when you go up, you can set the date. So date, date. 
and again uh, very quick to set the, the time going upwards and you screw it back in very smooth very smooth also screwing in and screwing out some watches are smoother than others this one is very smooth the Grand Seiko the Grand Seiko Snowflake you would be surprised how not smooth it is at all to uh, screw it back in actually it makes the same ratcheting as it does when you wind the watch it's a bit of a bizarre idiosyncrasy of the watch the other bizarre thing about it here I have it going I mean this watch is absolutely uh, incredibly refined obviously but you have the screw down crown and screwing is fairly soft it pops nicely screwing it has a fairly fairly pronounced ratcheting uh, thing about it um, but, but, but that's fine uh, it is, it's not a big problem um, what's funny is that setting the time well usually you go upwards with a Seiko here to move the time uh, forward you have to go downwards like you do on an ETA or a Celita uh, that's a bit unusual for for watch from the Seiko family but that's how it is and uh, I'm not sure about the date actually if you go down or actually the date is the same usual system you go down to to set it and uh, screwing back in slight push and it does the same bizarre ratcheting so it's bizarre the first time I felt like I was still winding it while I was um, screwing the crown back in slightly uh, bizarre but otherwise lovely and there's no backlash obviously uh, on this watch it's uh, it's perfectly fine this is one of the most horrible watches to interact with yes it has a power reserve which is nice um, and at the price point it's pretty good at 500 uh, euros but winding it is very difficult because the crown is small and at the four o'clock position so it's not a very and you can see to wind up the uh, three-day power reserve the grand seiko it takes about 20 25 motions such motion which is about not even half of a of a turn but here to wind it it takes a lot more and you will definitely um, get some damage to your to your thumb if your skin is a bit soft and you see it takes a while let's do half now the this is the most imprecise crown i have it doesn't really click at the first position or second i i didn't feel anything it's so soft here i don't know where i am if it's the time that's going to change or if it's the day it's dangerous because i'm uh here on the top obviously this one has a 24 hour uh indicator so i know that uh, it's 12 o'clock so it's fine it's a safe zone it's not the midnight um so i can change the time and it's very slow going you see compared to the seiko it takes ages to to move it now let's try to get to the date the first click it's so imprecise i don't know if i'm there is it down or up yeah it's up very very imprecise very soft uh this is one of the most unpleasant watches i have to interact with uh, so yes yeah, it's one of those watches you don't want to leave down more than two days because the power reserve is pretty small this one is a uh, japanese movement um 28,800 beats per hour, so better than uh, most of the entry-level uh, Seikos here. Uh, but yeah, this crown is uh, absolutely horrible. Let's talk about uh, Maurice Lacroix uh, Automatic. Uh, this one, unscrewing, let's see how it feels. Pretty soft, you feel little chunks there. And uh, the, the pop of it is, is a bit hard to find. It's weird. You see? Now I'm screwing it back in. See, sometimes, let's see, now it popped. Okay, it's quite a long, long, long run uh, there. Winding a Celita has a really nasty ratcheting noise. I hate it. Uh, setting the time, you have to go down, which is 
not an easy motion so you can't go as fast and the gearing is very long very, so it takes a long time to go all around uh, but the date will, will nicely click at the midnight and really only engage at uh, 11 30. Uh, still don't tempt the devil and uh, don't try to force the day to change uh, between 9 and 3 in the evening uh, just to be just to be safe and uh, now let's try to squeeze it back in uh, oh, it's nasty nasty uh, but once you're you squeeze back in it's uh, it's actually quite soft uh, so it's really i think the worst one is the the miota by far and next worst is the 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 selita which is a clone of the uh, eta2824 and um, yeah, you're gonna have the same unprecise, unscrewing, uh, and unpleasant uh, winding uh, on the, the Rongines uh, Legend Diver. Sometimes I wonder if it's broken, uh, and the next day it works perfectly fine. So uh, I don't know. I'm not a, not a big fan. Um, what else? Let's move on to uh, manual wind uh, watch the famous Omega Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch. And this one, it's uh, for all the owners, the millions of owners worldwide. Uh, it's a bit of a everyday uh, tradition to wind it. And it's the moment you interact with this beautiful watch and it's something you cherish. You have to know though that the case is not symmetrical, which means that the right side is, is fatter to sort of create crown guards uh, within it, which makes the winding, which is at the, the zero position, a bit harder. So you don't have much space to wind it. But when, once you get used to it, you use uh, this part of the index finger, this part of the, the thumb, and really the thumb does the, the whole action. It has this great mechanical wind. Let me put it next to the microphone for a second. It's a real pleasure, and once you get the hang of it, it's a lot of a uh, lot of fun. Um, and I'll show you how, how to set the time in it. There's no date here, so it's a very easy easy one. This one I like it because it's uh, instinctive. You go up to move the time forward. It's and it's fairly fast, so it's a great in between, uh, and it's a great watch. You push it back in, so there's just one position out here on this watch, and just for the fun of it. Let's start a chronograph, stop it. Everything is very mechanical about this watch. The, it's, a, it's a very uh, strong clicking uh, when you use the, um, the pushers of uh, the chronograph and uh, the, the winding action is just, it's not butter smooth at all. It's, it's very mechanical and it uh, has a fairly loud clicking. Uh, and once once you're used to it, it's um, it's a lot of pleasure. Let's move on to to Rolex, the king of watches. Now here it's a bit special because it's a GMT movement from the previous generation. I believe it has been uh, it, it's it's a bit better now. Um, you're gonna see what what I mean. Obviously, it's Rolex is the is the king of the. Of uh, this price level, you know, this is a five thousand dollar watch. Um, unscrewing is super smooth. Winding is super smooth. Obviously, it's a pneumatic watch. You don't have to wind it if you wear it every day, like uh, sometimes I do. But winding is very smooth. It has a soft clicking just to let you know that it's doing something. But the feel is, is like is very rubbery, you know, in a pleasant way. Uh, one thing though is uh, when you set the time, you're gonna notice that when I move the minutes hand, the and even the in the hour hand, I was on the GMT function, everything kind of moves. Actually, the minutes hand is not the is not really the big problem here. Uh, let's put it there. Um, and there's not really a, a big backlash. It's not the most precise though. Uh, sometimes. It'll fall a bit behind the marker, uh, just not restart straight away. There's a slight backlash to the to this Rolex movement. Uh, it's a GMT function, so you can set the. You see, when when I move the hour hand, you can move it any way you want, for forwards and backwards. When I move the the hours, you can see how it moves the everything at the same time, while it shouldn't move be moving anything. So it depends where you're gonna leave it. 
the uh, GMT hand will have moved slightly. So I think they've improved on it on the, the current GMT Master 2s and the, the current Explorer, t um, Explorer 2. Uh, it's not the most precise, but usually it's a watch you set and, uh, and, and wear for days on end. So yeah, slight backlash, uh, slight imprecision of the, of the GMT function there. But let's leave on a high note with the nicest uh, manual wine watch uh, that I have. It's uh, Jezeur Le Coultre. And here the, the crown sticks out sufficiently to make the winding uh, very easy, although there are two pushers for the chronograph. Um, the winding here, fr from there, from this distance uh, of uh, to the microphone, you're not going to hear anything. It's smoother than the even smoother than the, than the Rolex uh, in that rubbery feel but if you put your ear very close to it you hear that most delicate almost poetic uh, clicking winding of the the movement and just like the that dial and the finishing on the dial and uh, how everything is printed so so crisp and, and beautiful on, on, on this watch you know your this is a twelve thousand dollar watch it's not a um a cheap entry level watch let me put it next to the microphone to see if you can pick up any noise really i can barely hear it's like scratching a cat um it's uh incredibly pleasant thing and if you've been on the fence uh about manual wind uh trust me it's a great interaction you can have with with your watch because these are totally outdated instruments you know we have your iphones with a much better accuracy so you m if you're gonna have one of these you might as well have a manual wind and interact with it every day or every couple of days uh, one thing though i wanted to end on a high note but one thing about the uh, this uh, glc is that when you pop to the second position Notice how the hand, the minute hand is going to jump ever so slightly, sometimes a bit more. Let's do it again. You see, it jumps, but that's okay. It's probably because of a, of a strong um, torque uh, on the movement or whatever. I'm probably talking complete rubbish, but otherwise to set the time, uh, it's a bit harder here in between the, the f increments of five minutes. But when you set the time and push it back in, it doesn't move at all and it re-engage re-engages properly and uh, there is no backlash at all so this is the uh, yeah the epitome of uh, of, uh, of quality uh, obviously it's a uh, 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 they, they know how to make a, how to make a watch and it's an incredibly complicated movement running a chronograph uh, on the back uh, of it let's just pop it out just for fun yeah see there you go. So I hope this has been uh, useful and interesting. I think I've talked about all the different movements that I have in, uh, in my collection. Uh, one, I mentioned uh, Omega twice, obviously. Uh, this Seamaster, uh, actually the uh, Seamaster Aquaterra, I should also mention, has a screwed down crown, very smooth. The winding is ultra butter smooth and this one doesn't make any noise at all actually when you put it close to your ear nothing at all really really super smooth and it, it also has that sort of gmt function although it's not a gmt watch but to set the time is super easy let's say it's uh whatever hour 45 and 45 minutes you just put it to the second position put it at 45 minutes Re-engage. There's no backlash on the on this watch. Then you put it back to the first position, and then you can set the the hour wherever you want, and that's how you change the date as well. Obviously, if you if you you can go upwards and downwards, it works the same. So it's super super fast. You just set the minute, and then quickly turn around the the hour. I absolutely love this, and this is probably the best. Uh, the, yeah, the, the best way to uh, to set the time on a watch. It has the most, the softest winding, uh, the most accurate uh, screwing down and uh, and in of the 
of, of the crown and uh, I'm not sure why I had left it out because uh, uh, it's one of those things that make this uh, Seamaster Aquaterra uh, by all accounts one of the best everyday watch um, great water resistance uh, great resistance to, to shocks to magnetism um, and uh, it's uh, it's as important as the 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 crown action obviously um, uh, the fact that you can wear it in uh, all occasions and never be uh, caught off guard and uh, out of place so on this uh, last blue note I leave you there I've been <laughs> talking a lot 26 minutes uh, already I hope this was useful any question or any comments or if you want to talk about some uh, some of your uh, favorite movements or the ones you hate the most please put that in the comments that would be very useful for me and for the community and I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye-bye.